All right, so yeah, today is a review day. Uh, so we have about like 35 minutes before lunch. So let's uh, use this to review anything you guys kind of want to talk about. Um, so the topics I had in mind were just basic CSS, HTML, to kind of go over that process again, linking it with JavaScript, and then maybe using fetch within a website we create. So that's what I had in mind, but kind of want to defer to you guys. Anything, any general questions or specific questions from this week? All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go create a web page and then we can kind of go from there. But feel free to stop me with any questions, concerns, et cetera. All right. So I'm just going to create a web page from scratch. So this is something, you know, we've done. Again, the to do challenge, I think, is a great challenge. Um, so if you guys have not attempted it, I would highly recommend it because it kind of ties the concepts of creating an HTML page, adding some styling to it, and then adding some logic behind it via JavaScript. So um, definitely a fun challenge. Uh, I know I talked to some of my students in my discussion group. They seem to enjoy it. So again, if you've not tried it, definitely just give it a try. All right, but let's uh, create a page. So first thing I'm going to do is create index.html. And I have a snippet. Again, if you guys have any questions about snippets, they just save your um, save yourself some time from coding. So I have a base HTML snippet that I've created. And that just creates a bare bones HTML page with a header section. Um, a link to a style sheet, link to a JavaScript uh, source, and then title. Nothing too fancy here. So if I actually load this and run it, we'll see that's not too exciting. All right, so this is my page. There's nothing on it because my I have no content in my bottom section. All right, so let's actually change that. So I'm going to go back to my coding window. And uh, let's just give it a title right now. Let's just say H1. So H1 is a heading tag, uh, just to reiterate that. Um, headings are usually larger fonts and bolder. So this will be my sample. All right, so you always need a closing tag. Um, some tags have uh, content in it. So H1 has content. The stuff I've highlighted here is considered the content. Um, the angle brackets are tags. So this is an opening tag for H1, and this is a closing tag for H1. Again, uh, just pretty basics about HTML. And then if I want a paragraph underneath it, I could say, hello, November. All right, so now that I've actually added some content here, if I refresh my page, I hopefully should see that. And there we go. So again, this is my H1 tag. It's larger font and bold. That's how the browser processes the H1 tag. Uh, and then we have a paragraph here that's a little smaller. Let me make that a little bigger. Oops, I don't want to print. All right. So nothing too fancy there. But let's actually add some more to this. So um, oftentimes when you're creating a web page, you're going to need to you know, request information from somewhere else. So this is where uh, the JavaScript component will come into play. So I'm actually going to create a script file. And here, I've already linked to one. Um, so I'm going to just name it script.js. Again, I can name that whatever I want. Um, but just keep it generic. I'm going to keep it script.js. So I'm going to create a new file right next to my HTML file called script.js. And this is where my JavaScript logic will go. All right, so let's, um, let's think about what we want to do here. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to add a button. That button is going to eventually do something. So. I'm going to edit HR, which is a horizontal rule. And let's add a div. And in this div, there'll be a button. This button will have an ID of get images. Again, so just go over the terminology here. Button is my tag. And within that tag, I have attributes. So in this case, ID is an attribute. And I'm setting that equal to some value that I want. And I can have other attributes in here. Um, but for now, I'm just going to have an ID, and this will be get images. All right. Um, all right, so we have a button now. So if I save this and refresh, all right, there's our button. It says get images, but if you guys you know, are following along and click it, nothing really happens there. Um, the reason being is because there's no logic for it to do. Um, it's just a button. We can click it, but there's that click doesn't automatically get images for us. We haven't told our page where to get images or what images to get. So that's where um, we'll add some JavaScript in there. So 
All right, so now I have this button. I want to give it some functionality. So this, this is, as I said, going to go to our JavaScript file. And then I'm going to add an event listener. And so that event listener is going to uh, listen, basically, for whenever a click happens on that button. It's going to react to it and then do logic that we want uh, to do. So I'm going to start with window on load. This is something I mentioned uh, during my lecture on Wednesday. But this is a method that's automatically called when your window is loaded or when your browser window is loaded. So I can put some logic in here. All right, so the logic I want to put in here is to add an event listener. So to do that, uh, let's actually ask some audience members. Uh, Daniel Manfield, you're first on my screen. So could I ask you, how can I extract that button from my HTML page in my JavaScript? Can I take a look at your JavaScript again? I missed what. Yep. So I want to add an event listener to this button uh, element that I've created. So you could do, uh, you could get element by ID and assign that to a variable. Yep. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Yep. Thanks for that. So, so I, I create a variable that's going to just pull that element, and I'm going to use document. Document is uh, your HTML document. And then there's a method called get elements by ID. Just that. And then you want to just give it the ID that you gave your elements. In this case, I call my uh, button get images. I'm actually going to group on that with BTN, just to be more descriptive. And then I'll check that here. All right, so it's going to look for an element in my HTML document that has an ID of BTN get images. Again, when you're designing your web page, for the most part, you don't want different elements that have the same ID. ID should be unique for every element on your page. They could share classes, they could have similar classes, but ID should, uh, for the most part, always be unique. In this case, it's gonna hopefully find that button and then do something with it. So if the button exists, let's add an event listener. So I'm gonna do button get image, put S on that to be proper, uh, add event listener. And the event I wanna listen for is click. So when the user actually clicks the button, uh, I want to respond to that. So click is just the name of the event that's going to be fired. And then I'm going to give it some functionality. So let's just say on handle get images. All right, so this is actually a function um, that I'm going to create Well, So on handle get images, it's going to be a new function. And I'm going to do some stuff in here. So basically, when the user clicks something, this function uh, will be uh, invoked and I can do whatever I want here. So actually, I want to actually go grab some images um, as this name might suggest. So I actually have some images in mind. So there's this site called JSON Placeholder. Um, this just has some data. So if you go to the main site, uh, jsonplaceholder.com or dot, uh, tippy code, typey code.com, um, they have some generic data that they've created. So they have some posts, they have comments, albums, photos. So if I go to posts, like it's a bunch of text with title and body. Again, this is in JSON format. That's JavaScript object not uh, uh, notation. And so this is just an easy way to pass data back and forth. Um, so in this case, if I wanted to have like, you know, test out loading articles, I could access this data. Um, we have like to do's. We kind of um, did, you know, we interacted with this a bit on Wednesday. But I actually want to do some images. So they have photos. So I'm going to click on photos. All right, so they have all this data. There's actually 5,000 um, entries for images. So I'm actually going to load all of these onto my page. So which that might take some time. It's a lot of images, but eventually, so all these have a URL, thumbnail, thumbnail URL, and uh, a title. So my goal is to call this website and extract this data. All right, uh, does anyone have an idea how I can actually submit that request? Do you mean like a get request? Or? Yep, yeah. So I need to have a get request to get that request. Yeah, sorry. I need a get request, so an HTTP get request to request data from that website or that URL. Um, so within our JavaScript, do you, uh, do you guys remember that magic function that can kind of do that get request for us? Is it fetch? Yep, fetch. Um, so we're going to actually use fetch in here to get images. All right. So. 
fetch, if you remember, takes in a URL. So I'm actually going to go back here. And the URL for this is uh, JSON placeholder.tpcode.com slash photos. I'm going to copy that and dump that in the fetch. So it's, again, fetch is pretty simple to just, especially for get requests, you just give it a URL. And if there's appropriate data there, it can get it for you. All right, so fetch, again, this goes back to our Wednesday lecture, returns a promise. So a promise is something that's going to be resolved eventually, but like it's not going to halt my code, as in my web page will still be responsive, can do other things while this fetch request is happening. So the way we um, introduce on Wednesday to handle a promise is we have a dot then. So we fetch returns a promise. So we could ch chain a dot then right onto it. If we wanted to be like a little more organized, we could, you know, do uh, fetch request. Question, I'm clear. Yep. On line five, when you call on handle get images function, it won't work if you add parentheses, right? Like if you are actually calling it. Correct. If you add this here, um, I think I think that function is going to be executed right away. As in, without it, it's passing a reference to that function, and okay. it'll automatically invoke that function when uh, this event handler happens. Uh, we could actually, you know, it's always worth trying out, so um, we could test it quickly. But all right, so I have this fetch request. That's a promise. So I could do a dot then on there, and then usually I come out on a new line. So dot then, this will get a response, and that will. We'll do something with that response. Um, since we know this is JSON data, we could call response.json on it. This is another promise that's going to be uh, created. So we, uh, we do return. In this case, I have one line, so I probably don't need a return here. Uh, but I'll put it anyway to be explicit. And then this JSON request will return um, some JSON data to us. So we're going to do JSON as our input and then handle that JSON. All right. Again, I'm doing a lot of things here, so I definitely want to test incrementally. I'm actually going to pause here and put a console.log and not do anything with that data quite yet. So I want to make sure I'm actually getting data that I expect. All right, so this is where I'll put in some breakpoints and uh, try to debug this. JS, JS. All right, I think this should be fine. I'm not sure why these breakpoints aren't being breaky. All right, let me save this and run my page again. Done. All right, so hopefully this button has functionality. We could test it by this uh, by the breakpoint I just added. So for some reason, it's not getting in here. All right, this, I'm not linking my script correctly again. Script.js, script.js. I have parentheses here. That's the issue. All right, there we go. So sorry, I had a typo there. I had parentheses here. Uh, it didn't want that. I'm actually assigning it. I'm not calling a function. So when I had parentheses here, I believe it was calling the onload method, which is not what I meant to do that. All right, so now we actually have a breakpoint set. So let's actually see this run. All right, it's going to add this event listener. So that's what I expected. And then I'll continue. So again, this on handle get images function has not been invoked yet because we haven't actually clicked our button. So let me remove this breakpoint and then I'm going to click get images. So hopefully if this works correctly, I should get the JSON data and be able to see that in my debugger. So let's click that. Oops. Okay. All right. So it took, you know, maybe a few seconds, but then we got a response from that web page. So that's good. Let's continue. Now we're going to parse that JSON if that, that works. All right. So let's actually look at this JSON data. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see this well. Let me try to blow it up a bit. Um, when I hover over JSON, I get a nice tooltip. But there it is. All right, so can you guys see tooltips on the screen share? I'm not sure. Can. Yes? Yeah, we can. All right, cool. Yeah, so if I kind of want to inspect this data, there's, again, a lot of data. I think 5,000 images from that website. Um, I can kind of dig into this um, JSON object and just see values on it. So yeah, this looks like what I was looking at before, right? I have a thumbnail, URL, a title, URL, ID, album ID. So yeah, if I go through all of these, they're going to be unique um, and different images. Uh, these images, just to uh, break to you, are not that exciting. Uh, they're just basically colored boxes. But, um, but yeah, so I'm getting data back, so that's a good sign. So now 
my next step here is I want to actually use this data, right? I, I don't want to just print it out the console. That's not really what my website um, is meant for. Um, so I actually want to take this URL of the image that it's pointing me to and actually display it on my website. So that's going to be my next step. So let's actually look at one of these images. Again, I told you that's not too exciting. So I'm going to copy the URL. Okay, I clicked on it. All right, so it's just a box. Like again, it's literally a colored box. So this is 600 by 600 pixels with some text in it. Um, so that's actually the image we're going to be looking. Again, if we wanted more exciting images, we could try to find you know some service that gives us more images, or we get hard code images in. But the point of this was to request images from somewhere or image data from somewhere. All right, so that's kind of what we expect to see as our images. So let's actually proceed with adding that logic. All right, so our JSON data um, contains uh, a bunch of entries. Sorry. And let's actually use that JSON. So a um, good thing to keep in mind, we want to add a catch in case there's an error. So add error. Again, this is for the case where my fetch request, for whatever reason, if something went wrong, um, it's going to call a different uh, a different callback. All right, so we'll just print that error out if an error happens, but hopefully we're good and there'll be no errors. Uh, I'm going to pause here. Any questions on what we've done so far? about linking a uh, JavaScript to our HTML file. Uh, again, that was done via the script tag here. Uh, we use async defer because we usually want our script to be loaded once all of our elements on our document have been loaded for our HTML page. So this async defer will say we'll defer the loading um, until the entire document is loaded. Another way we could do this is we could put the scripts, you might see this on some pages, at the very bottom right before the body tag is closed. And in this case, you wouldn't need to defer. This will um, HTTP pages are sequential, so it goes top down. So it will get to this as the very last line in your body and then load the JavaScript down there. But I generally prefer it just to have it in my head section. So I'm going to keep it there with the async prefer. All right, so that's actually how we link our JavaScript page that we created, our JavaScript file that we created, and then we're doing some logic in here. All right, so let's actually add more functionality here. So I'm going to create a new method called const load all images. And that's going to be, again, that arrow syntax. Hopefully you guys are pros with that. Um, this is going to take in my JSON data. So instead of printing to console, I'm just going to call this method. Load all images JSON. All right, so once I have this JSON data, I know it's um, a list of some sort, so I could do a for loop over it. So I'll do let i equal um, zero, i less than JSON uh, one. Yeah, seems like that should work. And then i plus plus, again, simple for loop. Um, hope you guys understand the syntax here, creating a variable here. Um, gonna go until that's still the last element. And then each time I'm going to increment by one. Yeah, my arrow. All right, cool. So let's actually try to do something here. So I want to investigate my JSON object. So this is where I'll just console.log each individual object. So JSON I. All right, again, I just want to investigate, make sure I know what I'm doing. So I'm probably going to have to refresh. And let's call this again. Cool, that was good, that was good. All right, so we're actually in our for loop now going through our data. So let's actually look at, again, what our data is expected to be. So in this case, it's, again, it's it's a dictionary that has items in it, key value pairs. So URL will be my key. And then if I use that key, I should be able to extract the URL from it. In this case, I'm gonna use the thumbnails because they're a little smaller. So we load a little quicker and be easier to display. So I'm gonna go for thumbnail URL, All right? So let's go. Uh, image URL equals JSON. Again, still want that uh, that particular data item, and then I'm going to call a key on it. In this case, it was thumbnail URL. All right, so that ideally should get us the URL that we could use for our purposes. I'm also going to grab the text or the title that was in our data, so it's going to be I title. All right. So I have those values. I'm going to assume that I'm grabbing them correctly. Again, if something breaks, we could always debug. Um, 
Yeah. All right, and then I'm going to use this URL to create an element in my HTML page. So this is where JavaScript gets a little more fancy in that, let's say, create image. I'm going to pass it the image URL and then title. And then I usually want to have IDs. So I'm going to pass it I as the ID. So that'll just be my ID for the image I create. All right, cool. So I'm going to have a new function. Again, get to use separate functions for separate pieces of logic. So in this case, it's going to take in an ID. I'm going to call this SRC and then alt as my variables. Again, I can name them whatever, whatever I want. So that's what I chose in this case. Those are my parameters into my function. All right, so I actually want to create an image. So um, let's pull the audience. Uh, who else do I have? I have Steven, Steve Lawless. Could you tell me how I can create an element in my HTML page from my JavaScript, if you remember? Um, you can do uh, enter HTML. Yeah, well, so. Yep, enter HTML yeah, could yeah, update yeah. the content for an element. But I, for my first task is creating an element that I could actually inject into my HTML. Um, that's all right. If, if uh, I was wondering if uh, I could query the audience. But there's actually a method called document that creates elements. Again, a lot of this is memorization. So like, uh, it's a little different than like coding in Python and stuff, where I guess you do have to you know, know the methods, but it's not as much piecing together a puzzle. It's more just remembering how you do stuff and often looking things up. So again, I, I'm not saying I memorize these all the time. So I often am looking up, like, how do I create an element in JavaScript for an HTML document? Um, so yeah, uh, as a general note, um, looking up HTML stuff, JavaScript stuff uh, is not uncommon. All right, so I have document create element. This takes in uh, a name of a tag that I want to create or an element. So in this case, I want to create a image element. So again, this is going to be, you know, my image tag that you might see in HTML. That's what this is going to create. So I do create element. Obviously, I want to assign that to something. Let's say new image. All right, so I create an element and that can set attributes on it. So we've, again, we talked about attributes, make sure you know the terminology that I'm using. And if you don't, please stop me so I could explain it. But um, tags can have attributes. So in this case, I want to set an attribute. And for the image tag, um, I know, again, if you don't know this, you could look it up. Um, but I know there's a source SRC attribute. I'm actually going to pass that the SRC value that I'm passing to my code. So again, remember, that's the image URL that I get from my JSON data. So that's going to be the SRC um, value here. I'm also going to add it uh, image that set attributes um, alt. Alt is another attribute for the image tag. This is where if your image fails to load, it just doesn't exist. Um, your web page can show some text describing the image, just to, you know, not to have some like broken link or broken image there. So this will be my alt value. And then I also have an ID that I am passing in. So let's set that also. ID will be ID. Pretty simple there. All right, so we created this element, gave it some attributes. So this element exists, but it has no association with my page currently. So I actually need to give it a parent element. So let's actually look at look my uh, HTML. In this case, I have a div here that houses a button. Um, let's say I want to throw my images below that button. So I'm going to have another HR just to divide stuff up. And let's have a new div, and let's call that div ID um, div images. Pretty simple. All right, so this div will be my parent for all the images I'm about to load here. So let me save that. And then, so the, the, the space here on line 22, uh, if I want to comment here, so let's just do. All right, so you can add comments in HTML, uh, just like Python or JavaScript. Uh, comments are a thing in HTML. The syntax for that is open angle bracket, exclamation, double dash, and then you close it with a double dash and a closing angle bracket. Kind of weird syntax, but that's just how they do comments. So images will be inserted here. Okay. So div images is my parent. So I'm actually going to get that parent item. So to do that, again, I do that by document that get elements by ID. That's going to be my parent div. And the ID for that fella was div images. All right, so this is going to get that image for me. Just to change it up, I'm actually going to 
use a different method to get this um, element. So we can use get element by D, but we also have query um, selector. Oops, autofill always gets me. Can you go back and just leave the get element by ID and just comment it out so we can know that they're logically equivalent? Oh, sure, absolutely. Thanks for that suggestion. All right, so this was get element by ID. All right, so when I try to get an element by ID, I just give it the actual name in quotation marks. The key thing to remember, and again, easy to forget, so um, just try to stamp it into your brain. When you use query selector, you're gonna use uh, effectively CSS syntax to extract or to target what you want. So in this case, since this is an ID, I gotta use a hash, hash mark here. because so I'm using query selector. If I was using get element by ID, I just give it the name. If I'm using query selector, since I know it's an ID, it gets the hash mark and then the actual ID value, which in this case, it's div images. All right, so these, both of these do essentially the same thing. There's slightly different syntax. So make sure you understand when you need to use the hash mark or the dot for classes versus get element by ID you can kind of just do the name straight up. All right, so assuming I get my parent div, parent div, or we should use let. All right, parent div, assuming that's not null. Uh, I want to use append parent, parent div, there you are, append child. All right, so this is actually going to take this newly created element and append that when I do new image here. Okay, so this, this will actually add it to my HTML page because this div exists in my HTML page already. And when I do append child with my new element, this is going to in introduce it into my page because it's now has a parent that is on my page. All right, so let's actually test this out. Again, I might've made mistakes. So always good to incrementally test. Basically, just to review what we've done, we submit a fetch request to JSON placeholder um, that has my photos. This has JSON data, not actual photos. Um, I get a response and I parse that response with dot JSON. This is just the formal way to do it. Um, and then that uh, that's a promise that's returned. When that parsing is done, it, we trigger this part of our code. In this case, we just take our JSON data and call a method called load all images which we um, basically iterate over the JSON data, extract the information for each, um, each uh, item in that JSON data, and try to create an image tag for each one of those um, elements in our JSON data. So effectively, we're gonna create 5,000 different image elements and add that to our page. So let's actually see how this goes. I am curious if I've made a mistake or not. Usually I do. So I think I could refresh my page. All right, so this H, HR got added, so it's updated. Let's hit get images and see what happens. I'm gonna sit back, might take a few seconds. Might not work at all. All right, so we got a bunch of images that kind of popped up on my page. Um, if I keep going, again, there's 5,000 of them and I could probably go for a while. I'm not gonna, I guess let's just scroll to the bottom. Let's see how far I can get. Scroll bar, uh, scroll up. All right, there's a lot of images here. Let's just assume there's 5,000, like actually gonna count them all. That'd be not a good use of my time. All right, back to the top. All right, so again, I clicked get images. It took a while. Again, that's why it's it, we want it to be asynchronous because then if we want the user to do something else or maybe even load other stuff, we could do that while these images were getting fetched and then parsed and then you know getting created to our page. All right, so a bunch of images that got loaded. Any any questions on how we got to this stuff? I go to just to make sure I understand, <laughs> that is exactly what the image is supposed to look like, and that's not just a placeholder for each of these. Correct. Yeah. So um, JSON placeholder is they're just giving us unexciting images. Oops. Where did I go? Yep. So if I again the thumbnail URL is this. So if I actually click on it, um, it's just a boring image. So they're just using colored boxes for images. Um, you know they probably don't want copyright infringement, and also it's kind of hard to come up with five thousand different images. Um, so it's probably just easier to create generic images. Um, cool. Thanks. Yeah, again, it's not too exciting seeing colored boxes. It'd be, again, if we had actual images that we could link to quickly, um, it'd be more meaningful to us. Okay, so that's how we got to all these images. We fetched it from a place, um, we parsed the data, and then created elements and added those elements to our existing HTML page. So that's our interaction between JavaScript and HTML. Um, we have, you know, we're approaching lunchtime, but I definitely want to get into some CSS stuff, and I think specifically Bootstrap. So let's actually try to incorporate bootstrap into here. So we got a lot of images, lots to see. 
let's actually try to do something a, a bit more creative. So I'm going to Google Bootstrap, uh, strap, spell correctly. And there's this control called Carousel, which is pretty cool. And I've not had too much experience with it. So I'm actually going to try to incorporate that. Hopefully, I won't fail miserably. All right, Carousel. Again, if you're not familiar with what a Carousel is, it's just kind of a cool UI element that you can add to your web page. Um, this page is still loading. I'm not sure why. Taking a while, but effectively, you could have uh, like a slideshow on your web page. So you can have the first slide, and then should you go to the second slide? Here we go. So yeah, they can kind of you know go to other slides. We've probably seen these on many web pages. They look kind of cool, but you can have this on your own web page also without much effort. That's the whole point of Bootstrap. They offer functionality to you with minimal effort. You don't have to recreate the wheel. They've created the wheel for you. You just got to incorporate that wheel into your website. So um, again, if you've not used Bootstrap before, it's pretty easy to incorporate. Let's go through the steps. So when you Google for Bootstrap, you should get to getbootstrap.com and has pretty good documentation. They show you a lot of different elements. If you want a drop down, you could have a drop down button. Um, a lot of cool things you can add, but in this case, I'm focused on carousel. To actually use their elements, you need to add a few items to your HTML page. So you want to click on getting started. So up here, um, the first menu item, getting started. They kind of tell you, you know, how you incorporate it. Um, fair amount of read, but I will just kind of summarize it for you. You want to grab their CSS file or their CSS link and add that to your HTML page and also their scripts. Um, because some of their elements, uh, Carousel, uses their um, some JavaScript logic. Not all of them, but some of them will require scripts. So in this case, I'm going to copy this and then simply add it to my page, HTML page, not JavaScript. Uh, that will go up here. Notice I have this link, and I also have another link to a different style sheet that doesn't even exist. Let me actually create that just for fun. Style.css. All right, you can have as many style sheets as you want. Important thing to remember is that um, the order of these matter. So for example, let's say there's a style coming from style sheet that like changes the font of my page. I could kind of override that with my own style sheet. So since I put my style sheet after uh, bootstraps, I can kind of control what I want. Like if they have a font that I don't like, I could just override it, that font and use my font, whatever I want to use. All right, if this style sheet were before that, then bootstrap would get priority because whatever's listed last gets the priority if there's like a conflict over some attribute or some property. Okay, so I included their style sheet, but I also need their uh, JavaScript. So, oops, there it is. Uh, they have three lines for that. I'm just gonna copy that. Um, go back to my HTML page, paste those. It's definitely a bit longer. I'm gonna add these async prefers, just be safe. There we go, there we go, and there we go. Okay. So I have all this, this is gonna be the magic. So this is where I get access to all of what Bootstrap has to offer through their CSS file and then some logic that might be required for those CSS elements. Okay, so again, just went to Bootstrap, copied, copied this straight up. I didn't really have to edit anything. And now I actually wanna use um, one of the elements. So I was interested in what was it, Carousel. So let's actually kind of scan this page. Again, fair amount to read, they have good documentation. So take the time to read documentation and kind of understand what's going on. In this case, they give you good examples that you can kind of just copy and paste. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to go down here. I want these little buttons. So I'm going to copy this section. Again, always get, whenever you're copying code, take time to kind of look at it and understand what it, what it generally is doing. You don't have to understand the specifics. But in this case, just understand, OK, there's div elements here with some images that might be nested. Um, always good to kind of make sure you understand what you're copying and pasting. Um, all right, so let's. Put it over here. Add a new div. Sure. All right. So I copied all that code, pasted it. Um, I just want to rename this. Let's call it car images. All right. And let's just uh, take this for a quick spin. Um, so I'm going to grab a couple images, see if this works. Might not work. I'm kind of new to this also. Uh, all right, let's get a couple more images from them. Purple, sure. All right, so I'm just filling in the source for the images so that it actually has images to show. And then where else? One more. Any questions while I'm kind of tinkering with Bootstrap? Again, you just go to a page. Uh, they have great examples. You got to incorporate their style sheet and their JavaScript into your HTML file, and then you have access to whatever they have to offer you. All right, this is a brighter green. 
All right, three images we've added. Let's actually see what's happening here. So I'm going to paste that, save that, go to my page, refresh. All right, my images kind of go away, but now I get this giant image that's stretched. Not quite, doesn't look quite look what I wanted because it's taking my entire page. But in this case, I could still scroll through it. So notice that we have this cool slides show for uninteresting images here. If you want to kind of control the size, we have those options. Again, part of this requires reading bootstrap documentation, um, but there's this W100, which I believe stands for width 100. So it's going to take up the entire width and stretcher item. Let's say, let's make that a little smaller. Let's make it 10. Hopefully 10 exists. If I save that, refresh. Okay, much smaller. Uh, my buttons are still the entire width. So probably has some tinkering I want to do here, um, but my images are a little more reasonable. I don't want to stretch them out that much. Let's go to my style sheet. I'm going to add a background color. So this is the first style that I'm, I'm adding. Again, effectively what I've imported from Bootstrap, Bootstrap has all like a bunch of these selector and styles for it. If we actually want to look at that, which we can. So let me take a quick tangent. I'm going to copy this URL over here from the Bootstrap style sheet. Copy that and just paste it into my browser. All right, if you guys can kind of see that. These are all CSS styles. It's a, ginormous file with a bunch of styles in it. Um, not the best easy to read because this is a minified version. You can probably get find a easier read method. But in this case, there's just all these styles that we have access to if you want it in our web page. So that's, that's what we've linked to our page. Just another CSS file um, that has a bunch of styles predefined for us. Um, but I'm creating my own style. So in this case, I just want to change my background color. So the property for that is background, background color. And then we can pick any color we want. So Let's go with something that's pretty fine. Let's give it a nice cadet blue. That sounds like a pleasant color. Save that. All right, apply that style, refresh. All right, so now my entire page has that background. So that's what I did for my bo entire body um, section. If I wanted to target it for like a particular div, I could do that also. Um, all right, so we have a carousel. Again, these images aren't centered. We could bother trying to center them, but we still have our slideshow. It looks kind of cool. All right. Um, let's actually try making this dynamic. So we had 5,000 images. Um, we don't want to hard code these images because we don't know how many images we might have. So that's my last task before we break for lunch. Um, okay, so I have this working. Again, I've added, sorry, I've added three images here, but these are hard coded. I actually want this to be dynamic. So I'm actually going to remove these buddies. See you guys. I'm going to copy this because I, I want that as a reference and then get rid of. All right, so just to kind of give you guys a game plan here, let's add a comment here. Insert images here. So instead of just listing all images as I was doing before in the div, I want to use this carousel element to show one image at a time. It's a little more easier as a human, kind of like take all that data in instead of seeing some images. So let's actually, oh, we can keep this div here. It doesn't hurt having that here. Insert images here for. So I have that, and I'm going to insert new elements here instead of here now. So let's go back to my JavaScript and quickly do that. All right, so in this case, I don't want to use div images as my parent. I'm going to use something else. Let me just paste my HTML code for reference. Again, this is not, you can't actually have HTML like this. But I know that my parent's going to be um, this, but I actually want to give an ID. Let's give it an ID of ID equals, I don't know car images inner. Not very creative, but that's going to be an easy way for me to access that element. So do something similar here. Let's grab this code. And up here, parent div will be, I believe I named it car images inner. Okay, so it's going to grab that div that I pointed to earlier. That's our parent div. Let's actually do all of our logic from here. Okay, and, but then I'm going to need uh, to add a few more elements. I need an outer div and an inner image. So I have that image over here that I could reuse, um, but let's create a div also. In this case, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do let um, image div equal um, document dot create element. And it's going to be a div. So I just put in div here, pretty, pretty straightforward there. So that creates an element of div. That div is going to have an attribute. 
set attribute. And I'm just looking here. So this div has a class and uh, attribute of cares or the class value of carousel item. So that's what I want to add here. So it's going to be class and the value is carousel item. I'm not going to make it active because I think active actually makes it the first element. Um, all right, so I have that. And then inside of that div, there should be a child element of image, which is this image that I've created here. So let's actually move that a little closer. And this child should be a child, sorry, this image should be a child of our div here. So let's actually do that, image div, um, a pen child, and that's gonna be new image. All right, so again, I'm just trying to mimic the code that we had before. We had a div with a nested image. That's what I'm trying to do here with this code here. All right, but then this div that I've created needs to be nested within the parent div of the carousel. So finally, I'll do parent okay, div that append child, and that's gonna be this uh, image div. Okay, let's save that. Um, hopefully I have no mistakes. Looks pretty good. I have that element, that class. All right, as far as I know, this should work, but should in actuality don't always line up. So let's save this, refresh my page. Refresh, refresh. All right, when I click get images, ideally all the images should be loaded into my carousel and I can scroll through all 5,000 of them if I want to. I'm not gonna actually do that. Let's hit get images and see what happens. Oops. Let's sit back, see if anything happens. Something might not happen. Let's see if our carousel has anything. Seems empty. Might have been pretty long. And child. Under image div, it's you have dispatch event. I don't know if that's what you oh, want. No, absolutely. Thank you for those eyes. Uh, yeah, that 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 was autofill error. Thanks for hair checking. I was not looking at my own code that I was writing. All right, refresh this, save that. Um, let's just add a breakpoint to make sure we're actually getting into there. All right, get images. Might take one or two seconds, maybe three seconds, four seconds, longer. Make sure my names are correct. So I have car images inner. That looks correct. Refresh. All right, we're getting here. Does current active exist? Yeah, I think you can get rid of line 38. Thank you. It's throwing an exception there. Thank you, Chris, I believe. All right, yeah, that was throwing an exception because I was appending something that didn't exist. All right, I think that should clean up my code. Um, let me just start from scratch and then we'll get you guys to lunch. Okay, cool, there's my page. Let's move that over here. Uh, let's click get images. All right, we get our breakpoint. We continue, continue. Let's be doing stuff correctly. All right, I think the first image got appended. Let's just let it run. All right, it's doing stuff. Let's see if my carousel works. Still nothing. All right, I'm a little annoyed with that. All right, I get my images here. That's not where I want them. Do you have to assign it which, can you take a look at the three of them and see if there was a difference between the three separate images in your carousel the first time? Yeah, the only difference was that one of them was marked active. So uh, it had an active class, which meant it was a selected one. Um, but it seems like, all right, let me kind of just try to hard code this so I could kind of cheat my way to victory. All right, I'm gonna start with one image here and maybe that'll be correct. So this is gonna be my active image, which is the one I had before. Refresh. All right, so I have a carousel going. Uh, there's no items inside the first one. Let's see if I could click get images and that works. Clicked. Do this. For some reason my images don't wanna exist. Oh, 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 anyway. So I forgot to add a class to my image. So I need this D block with 10 which is what I forgot to add to my 
image here. So that's going to be a new attribute. So new image, that's set attribute uh, class. And I just copied the value over there. So it should have a class of D block. And then with 10, All right, fingers crossed that that was the issue. Refresh, thank you. Get image here. Okay, not having luck here. I'm not gonna waste too much more of you guys' time, but we'll figure it out or launch. Um, but effectively, you could add bootstrap to your uh, HTML and kind of use cool features um, as you saw. So if we had hard-coded images, um, they worked for us. Um, so I'm having an issue inserting this image into my carousel. I'm not sure why. All right, div class image, and this would be Fresh. All right, so notice I don't have an image here. So that's where I use the alt tag. In this case, I put donuts, but I do have a carousel kind of going here. Okay, um, before we break for lunch, uh, any questions? Let's actually take a look at the challenges that we have um, for you guys today, but also questions. Um, so we have HTTP server three. So if you guys did one and two, uh, server three is just the extension on that. Um, we also have a stretch challenge of creating a static web page. So adding a GitHub page if you're interested in just messing more with um, CSS and Bootstrap and JavaScript and HTML. Um, so this is kind of work on your own. Uh, you could use um, some CSS elements. Fluxbox, again, we've mentioned this. Um, good thing to look into. I think I repped a website before. I repped it again. Fluxbox. Fluxbox. CSS. First search result is a complete guide to Fluxbox, one of my favorite uh, tutorial sites. Just because for me, the, these images do a lot, even though they may seem minimal. Um, it's really easy to understand what these properties do, like justify content. Yeah, I'm gonna get a spike when we get out because Daddy's asking multiple times to stop screaming. So not. Thanks so much. Yeah, your mic's on. Yeah, um, it's an interesting story there too. I want to know the details. Um, but yeah, so again, this great site for learning Flexbox. Flexbox is really useful for CSS when you're doing it yourself. Um, it can be kind of tricky initially, but. Um, yeah, I, I think Flexbox is great to use and good to kind of understand what you can do with it uh, when you're trying to arrange stuff on your page. Okay, so again, uh, challenges are just HC, HC, HTTP server three. If, again, I know, busy week, if you didn't get to the to-do challenge, which was from Wednesday, I believe, definitely attempt that. That's a good intro to what we basically did here, which was creating an HTML page, putting some content on it, and then giving some logic to it um, via JavaScript and Maybe some CSS styling if you get the urge to style your page. Questions, comments? Do you guys understand fetch? I guess that's probably the most complicated portion of this. Fetch. Pass the URL, that's a get request. If you want to make a post request, you could add extra parameters to specify the method as being post. Um, but effectively, you get a response asynchronously, you parse it, and then you can use the data from the website that you got. All right. I assume you guys want to get to lunch, so stop recording.